everyone, I'm Brea Thorne. Welcome to the channel where we got yet another exciting unboxing here. Now, unboxings can be a little bit, a little bit silly sometimes. But to me, unboxing a PC, a gaming PC, is very important because I need to show you guys exactly what state these things arrive in. Now, when companies send me a PC, because I cover a lot of system integrators, when a system integrator sends me a PC, they know they're sending it to me. So they're generally gonna put their best foot forward, but that's a good thing. We can actually see what they're capable of at their best when it comes to building and packaging a PC. Though SkyTech has told me directly, yes, it's from SkyTech. When they're building a PC to send out to for review, they just go through their normal process and pull it directly off the line. So, and if you look at the PC I reviewed before, which you can see the link for up there, there were a couple of little issues with it. So that does actually ring true to me. But anyway, besides all that, what we have today is a, is a PC from SkyTech. It is the SkyTech Azure featuring the Inwin 103 case. Now, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to highlight the Inwin case. And it's one that I find really interesting. It has an interesting airflow layout and we're gonna be actually testing it today too. I'm live on stream. Say hi guys. This video should be uploading on the 1st of July. This is gonna be part of their 4th of July sale. It's gonna run for two weeks. So this thing's gonna be on sale, but not only is it already gonna have a sale price, you're gonna be able to get another percentage off with coupon code Brayathorn because they're part of Operation Code Brayathorn. So you're gonna get a double discount on for the 4th of July, from the 1st to the 14th of July, if I'm not mistaken. And there, we are. Took some, took some bumps and bruises here on the way. So we're gonna take a look at the inside. It's pretty well uh, crumpled in. So here's what we, you get when you get a SkyTech PC. You get the quality control certificate and uh, KC, shout out to KC. Thanks for doing the QC on this thing. So there's a build inspection, installation for your OS and then performance testing. Wind stress, full test, Prime 95, Furmark and correct thermal performance. So you're watching thermals when they do it. And then here's a handy little troubleshooting guide that they give you. Um, if your PC is not powering on. And then just sort of a process that you follow. And at the end, if it still isn't turning on, contact customer support, there you go. Then on this side, let's see what we've got. This is a maintenance guide. It says, uh, has paragraphs for keep it updated, keep it clean and keep it safe. Okay, so here we have, looks like our Wi-Fi antenna. This is some zip ties. It looks like this has a, what is this? A support bracket. Looks like a support bracket for the GPU right there. You do get a mouse. It is not the worst mouse. Okay, so looking at our, uh, let's let's start at the top. Pretty sparse on our front IO is what everyone calls it, but this is our top IO. Two USB 3 type A's, and then a headphone and a microphone jack. It doesn't say which one is which. I don't know if they painted over it. It doesn't say which one's headphone and which one's microphone. <laughs> let's look at the back really quick so we can take a look at our rear IO. So of course, this is great to have. You love to see it. Your monitor connector, con uh, connection goes to the GPU. So let's see, we've got two, three, four, five type A USB ports, and then a type C, which is 20 gig, 2.5 gig ethernet. And of course, you gotta have it. You gotta have the PS2 connector for your XOC, your extreme overclocking. Uh, display port and HDMI out. I believe this is a 12600K, so we would have onboard video. So that could actually cause a problem if you plug into that instead of your GPU, because it might work. However, a uh, certain motherboard BIOS will notice when you have a, a dedicated GPU and it will shut off the uh, your, your video over USB and your onboard video, I believe. I'll have to look into that. Oh, that's cool. So these just pop out. Very cool, Inwin, very cool. And of course we have our Instapack, love to see it. And uh, of this right here, please follow the instructions in your quick start guide before plugging in your new PC. All right guys, yes, that is very true. Oh no, 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 no. I told you guys, I know it's a 3060 Ti. It doesn't even really need that much power but no, we'll get into this. We will talk about this. There's a lonely uh, RGB connector down here. So some of the RGB not, might not work off the bat. I'm surprised I didn't see the hot glue method that I saw before, but we'll leave that unplugged for now. So here's one of the things that I wanted to test. Okay, so you'll notice two fans here set to exhaust, to exhaust. And then one fan back here set to exhaust. What? Is there no intake fans? That's right, there are zero intake fans 
on this case. And it used to be that I would tell people, oh, well, you know, you just flip these around and then it'll be okay. No, I was wrong about that because there is no filtration on that ventilation on the side. It has to be exhaust. So where does the air come from? Well, it comes from down here. Filtration comes from here. So what we are going to do today, we're gonna to plug this thing in, we're gonna hit it with a stress test, test the temps, and afterwards, I'm gonna pop this in there. Cooler Master 360 matrix fan. It's just gonna go right into the bottom, just like that. If you go back and you watch my really long sort of review of the of the Skytech Prism 2, I have a shorter one where it's an unboxing and first impressions like we're doing now, but I'm doing more this time. And then I did a sit down where I was like, here's the pros and cons of that system. And one of them was two power connectors on the GPU and they only ran one eight pin PCIe power connector from the power supply with the pigtail. If it requires basically more than, more than 300 watts overall, you need to run separate ones. It's a good practice to just run separate ones anyway. Well, would you look at this cable management though? Hey, very nice. And we have an in-wind power supply. Uh, I do like the fact that these have a ring on them that sort of gets this closer to the side there. So you have less uh, blowback of your hot air. You've got space for uh, either 2.5 inch uh, SATA SSDs or 3.5 inch hard disk drives right here, two of them. Then you have SATA drive, SATA drive. Okay, well, we're gonna run this thing. Let's run it as it is. We're gonna turn it on, get a look at that RGB, because you gotta. We'll see if there's any RGB not working so we can plug it in, because I did see that one connector came off. See the thermals, and then we'll add those three fans and see if they improve. Yeah, I feel like there should be more RGB involved here. There we go, look at the difference there. That one connector. Go back to putting the, the hot glue, guys. I don't care how it looks, because this is an RMA right here waiting to happen. Oh my God, I put a three instead of a... Whoa, whoa, whoa. E, hold on. Look at this, just hitting the E key, it puts a three and an E in there. So, eh, not great guys, not great. Okay, what do we got? 12600K, nice. And it does have an aftermarket tower cooler, so it's not like they're using the stock Intel cooler. Uh, yeah, that's a Strix RTX, an Asus RG Strix 3060Ti V2 gaming OC LHR. And it's an Asus Prime Z690P Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. We got 16 gigs of DDR4, um, looks like 3200. Let's run a quick um, Cinebench R23 and we'll see what our temps are like. So let's restart the timer here. There we go. And we'll get a good solid average. We're already up to 70 degrees Celsius on this. 71, 72. Let's bring this a little closer to where the camera is at. Our core clocks are currently at 4140 megahertz, 4,140 megahertz, or 4.14 gigahertz. Staying, we're at 77 degrees Celsius. We're sticking at 4.14, and we're, looks like we're locked in at, well, there we go, we just hit eight, uh, 80 degrees Celsius on the CPU. That's okay. 80 degrees Celsius is, on the CPU is okay. We're not in any, any danger of damaging anything at this point, and if this cooler can keep it at that, remember Cinebench R23 is a, uh, it's a synthetic workload. You're rarely going to push your CPU this hard. That's the thing about stress testing. It's not much of a stress test if you're not stressing it out beyond what would be normal. We're keeping it simple. Max CPU temp on Cinebench R23 and max GPU temp uh, on Fermark. Now keep in mind, this is a, a Strix 3060 Ti. I don't know that every one of these is gonna come with a Strix 3060 Ti. That's not been made clear to me and it's not stated on the site, but this thing has a massive cooling solution on it. It's huge for a 3060 Ti. GPU clocks at 1695 megahertz. And the notes I'm taking are just for this stream. Like I'm gonna be able to go over the recordings and see what the actual temperatures and frequencies are. Uh, looks like down to 1680 already, uh, but the maximum temperature so far for the GPU is 48.8 Celsius. It is continuing to rise. 
Well, max temperature 57.2 degrees Celsius. I think we can tell right now that this GPU is fine in this configuration. It doesn't need the extra fans, but we'll see if it, if it benefits the CPU. I think we'll go ahead and stop it here because it is not getting any hotter than this. And our clocks are still at 1680, uh, 1680 megahertz, 1695 megahertz. I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty stable. When it comes to gaming, your GPU is the most important component and keeping it nice and cool keeps your frame rates up. Um, this case is probably fantastic for a gaming PC. Um, if you're trying to do more CPU intensive stuff, I don't know, but I can tell you for a gaming PC, this is gonna do what you need. Oh yeah, look at that. That fits like a glove. Look at that. Super easy to do. This is no problem. Any of you guys could do this. Welcome to Cooler Master, home of the Master Cooler. All things being fair, we put the glass back on. Now, something that I do need to say, and I forgot to say at the beginning of this, but this PC was provided by Skytech, and I do get to keep it. However, they do not get to tell me what to say during the video. They did not get to tell me to see any of it before it gets, well, actually, it, this is a live stream, so before it gets published, they could be watching and seeing this or watching the VOD. Either way, uh, they don't get to decide what content or what I say goes into the video. They don't get to just decide my, what I tell you I feel about the, the whole thing. And I also was not paid for this. They're just like, hey, well, you get to keep it if you want, but just let us know what you think about this and the in-win case and all that. Do you guys remember what I set my password to? They said set your password to something memorable, I think. So I think it's something memorable is the password. Super memorable. Did I do that right? Super memorable, okay. But now I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I am tired. We'll see if this helps the CPU at all. If not, we can make the rear fan an intake and see if that fixes that. Because honestly, the CPU is pretty isolated like this. Uh, let's just see if this helps and change our average. Let's just hit reset our average. Maximum went up real quick to 72, but right now our core temps are at 65. Max went up to 74. I mean, core temperatures are sitting at 72. And of course, the thing is we're gonna have pretty large deltas between the different cores. Now, the 12600K has six performance cores and four efficiency cores. So it's essentially a 10 core processor, but four of those cores are meant for handling background tasks. The, the reason we're seeing core temperatures sit at 73, but our maximum is at 80, is because our performance cores are hitting uh, higher temperatures than our efficiency cores. And this is shown right here. Uh, P core five, because it's P cores zero through five, that's six cores, uh, is sitting at seven, is one sitting at 79 degrees Celsius, whereas all of our efficiency cores are sitting at 66 or so degrees Celsius. So you'll see the performance cores are where the temperatures are at. That's why you see the max temperature is higher than what it's saying is the overall core temperature. So we're still hitting 80 degrees Celsius. There's zero change to that. So we'll run, uh, let's run our Fermark again. Uh, yeah, max temperature back right back to 81 degrees Celsius. This nothing really changed there. And we're looking at up here at GPU temperature maximum, not hotspot, but the, the maximum temperature for the GPU just in general. That 1710 is what it's at now, actually. Maximum temperature at 48.3 Celsius. So this might actually be helping out the GPU, but we let it run for a lot longer before. We'll, we'll give it some more time. I think what this is gonna come, turn out to be is that those fans at the bottom don't do much. And that's kind of sad because I spent 50 bucks on them. And it might turn out that spinning around the rear fan into an intake fan is gonna be the actual poggers move. And also flipping around the, the fan on the cooler as well. Looks like we're right at 57.1 Celsius, whereas before uh, we were at 57.3. So yeah, we're looking at 0.2 degrees Celsius better. It had a free access to air, that's fine. Um, I guess one good thing is that because there are perforated perforations on the uh, PCIe slot covers, it could have been pulling some air through that unfiltered space uh, because that's sort of a path of lesser resistance than the filtered openings on the bottom. But those are so large 
compared to the, well, I don't know. This might be helping a little bit with, with keeping dust out of the GPU, maybe. Hard to say. So this, the, this, the, this right here, apparently unnecessary, completely unnecessary. Isn't that nice? But yeah, 57 degrees Celsius running Furmark is great. Like this thing for your GPU, flawless. It's totally fine. Needs no, uh, no adjustment for that. So we got this fan right here pushing air this way. And then we have this fan here as an exhaust. Yet we also have these fans over here as exhaust. So we'll leave those as they are. We'll leave that be. And then we'll take this fan, flip it around and turn it into an intake. So it would be fairly easy to get just some mesh or something from, um, from and you know what, we'll look one up on, on the internet here in a bit. It would be fairly easy to get a square of 120 millimeters mesh or just a little larger with magnets to just put over this to give you, give you an intake uh, filter, filter right there. Uh, but yeah, it's just four screws. Let's do that really quick. Should just take a second. So this CPU fan is held on with two clips at the top and two clips at the bottom. We literally just have to relocate, relocate it to this side over here or flip the fan itself around and have it pull air through. So let's just get this flat head under there without, and we're gonna to try to do this without damaging the fins. Remember we got it to 82 degrees Celsius before. So that's what we're looking for here. We wanna get like, let's try to get a 75. 75 is what we're looking for at, min at maximum is what I'm looking for. Uh, looks, wow, we already hit 74, but that, you know, it spikes. That's okay. Oh, we're, we hit 82 degrees Celsius again as a maximum. Our average looks like it's doing a little better. It's staying around 70 degrees Celsius average, but one of the cores still hit 82 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, honestly, again, that's fine. It's fine. I was just hoping for some improvement with this thing getting fresh air directly to it. From the first time we ran Cinebench R23, this was manageable, 100%. So it's not the case of like, oh, we gotta fix this overheating issue. There is none. It's just, I wanted to get temps a little lower. I wanted to see if this was already pretty optimal and guys, it, it kind of is. Inwin did a great job with this case because I couldn't really, I couldn't change anything when it came to the, the CPU temps. They were acceptable already. Everything was fine. Um, when you run Cinebench R23, it's gonna put your CPU through hell. That's what it's for. And uh, I will say the cooler is doing, it's doing the minimum. It's basically, it's not, it's, you're not overheating your CPU. It's not thermal throttling. It's fine. It's totally fine. Um, but I believe that if you want to overclock your CPU, maybe putting something like a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler in here might be a, a benefit to you. Uh, yeah. Feel free to get this. You have my seal of approval. Uh, this thing's running great. And uh, the only downside that I found in this entire build is not even 100% of a downside. Because the ROG Strix 3060 Ti doesn't pull more than 225 watts of supplementary PCIe power. So the fact that the power supply only has the one uh, PCIe cable that I could find anyway, uh, and they ran it on that, plus a pigtail for the second connector is fine. I just wouldn't put a more power hungry GPU in here unless the power supply is up to the task and has more than one PCIe supplemental power connector. Even though I had um, questions about how it would be with everything being exhaust, everything stayed within parameters that you would want for your temperatures, so yeah. This thing is awesome. Be sure to check it out for the 4th of July sale and be sure to use code Brayothorn to get an additional discount on top of that. And um, yeah, and take a look at skytechgaming.com and uh, check out the, the Azure right here in the Inwin 103. So thank you, for, thank you to Skytech and thank you to Inwin for, uh, for providing the PC. And I look forward to, uh, to, to seeing you guys building some of these on stream.
and uh, that'll be it. Until then, take care.